Hello everyone, welcome to the next lecture of electronic devices. Uh, this is the last lecture for chapter number one, uh, lecture number eight. Uh, in this lecture, we have a couple of quick concepts to discuss. The first, we're going to talk about how to draw these uh, magnitude and the phase responses. Um, and second, we are going to quickly talk about um, how we can, uh, if we have a complicated circuit, for example, a bunch of resistors and the reactive components are connected, so how we can simplify it quickly uh, to convert that into a single time constant network. Uh, all right, so let's start with how we can draw the magnitude response and the phase responses of the um, of the filters. All right, so let me start with the magnitude response of a low pass filter. Okay, so let me write down this equation that we derived in the last lecture, which was. Uh, I guess over here. So this was the equation, right? D of J of omega K over one plus omega over omega naught whole square. Uh, all right, so magnitude response is T of J of omega equals K over one plus omega over omega naught whole square. <laughs> <clears throat> so one important thing to remember is whenever we are drawing this magnitude in the phase responses, we usually draw in decibels. So essentially what we will draw is, what we will draw is a 20 log of modulus of T of J of omega uh, divided by K. So we will draw this versus omega over omega naught. <clears throat> so this will be our y-axis and the x-axis, and this will be the equations that we will use. All right, so let's, let's draw this uh, plot now. Uh, so our x-axis again is, we will draw omega over omega naught, and this is usually in log scale. And our y-axis is 20 log of d of j of omega k expressed in decibels. <coughs> All right. <coughs> so, um, so what we will do is, the first step that we will do is we will try to see... Um, we will divide this entire thing into two sections. One is, this is, for example, this is number one here. At this number one, interestingly, we can see that if omega over omega naught becomes one, this means omega equals omega naught, right? And then we can divide this thing into two other sections. In this section, our omega will be less than omega naught. And in this section, our omega will be greater than omega naught. <coughs> All right. <clears throat> so what will happen when our omega is less than omega naught? Our values will be zero decibels and it will remain zero. So essentially what we are doing is we are putting this value one over here uh, in over here and then we are trying to determine the magnitude response in decibels you can easily put 20 log of t of j of omega over k uh, and you can pick up any value for the k all right so this will be uh, zero decibels and this will remain almost zero let me kind of uh, this will remain almost zero and then starts to taper and then come all the way down, and then we will see how this is coming down here. <clears throat> all right. So what is happening over here is at, at over here, the difference is, this difference is three decibels. I'm gonna come back to this point again. Uh, all right, so at, at before 
omega before this omega over omega naught equals to one our values of the decibels remain zero and as it will become as omega becomes starts to increase from omega naught uh, the values of the decibels will start to fall down so we are going to get a minus 10 decibels minus 20 decibels minus 30 decibels so another important thing to remember is <coughs> for every decade expansion for every decade increment and so for example if this is one for this could be for example point one uh, and for every decade increase which is 10 over here it will fall 20 decibels and you can easily calculate that by using this equation number one so for every decade in the log scale uh, which will be come out to be somewhere over here and somewhere over here right so for every increase in a decade which is moving from 1 to 10 the next one would be 100 at 100 the the magnitude response will be minus 40 dBs right so for every increase in a decade which is from moving from 1 to 10 the uh, magnitude response which is 20 log of t of j of omega over k has dropped from has dropped or should drop by 20 decibels so this decrease is minus 20 decibels per decade if you will just remember you can easily continue to plot it very easily you can easily find all the numbers similarly you can also see the increase why i did selected this point one for example if you move on the other side for every increase in the decade at the log scale so which means or decrease in the decade at the log scale which is moving from one to point one value our um we are going to get an increase of 20 decibels right so that is why we move from minus 20 decibels to zero decibel so this is how you can very easily draw the magnitude response of the of the uh of the low pass filter <coughs> a couple of uh, more quick comments here is 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 this omega equals omega naught and this three decibels so this omega naught is known as a cutoff frequency omega naught is a cutoff frequency so cutoff frequency is a frequency <clears throat> below which for this low pass filter it is letting all the frequencies in this region it is letting all the frequencies in in this region to pass through and attenuates all the frequencies moving forward right so the the definition for the <coughs> sorry <coughs> the definition for the cutoff frequency is for example for a low pass filter it will be it is a frequency below which it will allow all the frequencies to pass through and above which it will attenuate the frequencies and the magnitude of the phase response will be constant below this frequency below the omega naught the magnitude of the uh, magnitude response will be constant or within three decibels we introduced this concept earlier uh, in the course as well and above this frequency we will we are going to have a sharp decrease the decrease is minus 20 decibels per decade with the increase in the frequency I, our ideal low pass filter should have been something like this for example if this is omega over omega naught and this is one our ideal filter should have looked like this right we want a cutoff at exactly one at this cutoff frequency right so for example while we are designing the circuit we say that i don't want above this above this omega naught frequency i don't want anything to pass through if this is true then this would be my ideal filter right so this is an ideal filter above this frequency above this one or omega equals omega naught nothing is passing it is blocking all the frequencies However, this is not true for the real uh, filters or um, the real components. Uh, so when we consider that, uh, this is how it falls, right? And over here, our magnitude response is decreasing by minus 20 decibels per decade. 
All right, so this magnitude response tells us a lot of things, especially in the terms of designing a circuit. Whenever anybody will ask to design a low pass filter for a specific cut of frequency, this means that the, this means this frequency, right? And this is a frequency that we want all the frequencies below this frequencies to pass through for a low pass filter. For a high pass filter, it will be all the frequencies should pass through after that. All right, now let's quickly draw the phase response as well. All right, by the way, sorry, one thing left over here. This cut of frequency is also known as a 3 dB frequency. You're also going to come as, come across this term again. Right, so this omega naught is, is a cut of frequency. It is also known as a 3 decibels frequency, right? All right, because at this frequency, our magnitude response drops by the by a very small amount, 3 decibels. <coughs> All right. Next one is, now let's draw the phase response of a low pass filter. <coughs> okay, uh, let me, let's, let's look at the equation. If I remember, <clears throat> so it was minus tangent inverse omega over omega naught. So the phase <coughs> response, <coughs> sorry, minus tangent inverse omega over omega naught. So if you're plotting omega over omega naught, just plot the mind, just pick up a calculator, put in the value, different values of omega over omega naught, and you can easily plot these things. Even if you don't remember this, amount of the decibels drop, for example, in the magnitude response per decade, right, over here. So how to draw this thing? I just tell you some of the basics that even without needing the calculator, you can quickly um, draw the magnitude response. However, for example, uh, if you don't remember any of that, uh, just pick up a calculator, start to put down different values of omega over omega naught, let's see 0 0.1, 0 0.5, 1, 10, 10, 20, 100, and whatever the values that you get for the this, um, you can easily plot the, uh, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> you can easily plot this magnitude response. All right, now let's do the phase response. Phase response, our x-axis is still the same, omega over omega naught uh, in log scale. And then on the y-axis, we have phi of omega. And essentially what we are plotting is the minus tangent inverse omega over omega naught. So some of the, <coughs> sorry, some of the interesting characteristics to look at the phase response is, uh, let me first draw this. Uh, I'll try to draw it better. Okay. Uh, All right, uh, so this is one, this is 10. This one is again omega over omega naught. Over here, your omega is less than omega naught. Over here, this is omega is greater than omega naught. <coughs> <coughs> and this is point 0.1, right? So you are increasing a decade over here. On the right side, you increase the decade and you decrease the decade on the left side. All right, and then what we looked at is, for example, what will be at one if you're gonna put a one and do this thing. Tangent inverse of one is, tangent inverse of one is pi by four, which is 45 degrees, right? So with a minus, it will come out to be minus 45 degrees. Now, when you do a 10, you the value that is gonna come out to be minus 90 degrees. 
right and a minus 90 degrees for a 10 means that the drop over here so this drop this is again dropping per decade so how much is the drop the drop is minus 45 degrees per decade all right and then what we another interesting thing that we can see over here is that the difference this and this plot should go like this so this difference is approximately equals to 5.7 degrees and you can see the same difference appearing over here okay um right okay so in order to draw the phase response of a low pass filter again i think the point to remember over here is that you should start with uh, or the most easiest thing to do is just to uh, if you have a calculator just start to put different numbers for omega or omega naught 0.1 even less than 0 0.1 0 0.05 and you're gonna get start you're gonna start to get the values um, you will realize that lower than 0 0.1 the the differences are um over here the differences in the uh and the, the phase the the changes in the phase will be very small as you move from point one to one there's an increase of a decade so the increase of the decade will result in um the decrease of 45 degree angle so you get a minus 45 degree uh when you move again uh, another decade higher to 10 1 to 10 you get a minus 90 uh angle over here right so the way to plot it another easy way to plot it just find out this phi of omega for omega equals omega naught you can start with put down the value 1 10 point 0.1 point zero five. go down lower if you like and then you can also go down higher uh, on the other end for example after 10 you can do 100 uh, etc 1500 uh, whatever the values you want so you can quickly you can just put down all of these values uh in this equation uh and plot this thing that could be uh, an easy way to do it however the interesting thing to remember over here is uh, the decrease in the angle per decade is minus 45 degree in the magnitude the decrease in the magnitude response per decade is minus 20 decibels uh, magnitude response over here uh, again uh, I hope that you understand the magnitude response even better because this is the basis for designing a low-pass filter selecting a cutoff frequency we saw that at a cutoff frequencies our magnitude response only decreases by three decibels a small amount and that is why this frequency is also known as a three decibels or a 3 dB frequency or a cutoff frequency cutoff frequency is the one for a low-pass filter below which it will allow all the frequencies to pass through above which it will start to attenuate all the other frequencies. So we see that after the cutoff frequencies, it is attenuating by minus 20 decibels per decade. Um, okay, so with that, this will uh, be our phase response and the magnitude responses. Uh, we have one more quick um, topic to talk about before we uh, wrap up our discussion for the chapter number one um, and that is known as a uh, rapid evaluation of tau rapid evaluation of tau right so we talked about stc networks right stc network is which has a one resistive one resistance and one capacitance or inductance right one capacitance or inductance right it should have a one resistance one capacitor or inductor if it has multiple resistors or multiple capacitors or inductors then we have to reduce it so let's do a couple of quick examples or how we can reduce it all right or how we can quickly find out the value of tau uh, because value of tau again relates with omega naught cutoff frequencies so that is very important while analyzing these filter circuits or these time constant networks okay so in order to evaluate in, and we, we are going to do a couple of examples in order to do this thing we need to uh, essentially find equivalent resistance or equivalent capacitance and the inductance in the circuits and the way to do that uh, the first thing that we do is um, we reduce the source to zero which means that 
if you have a voltage source short the voltage source if you have a current source open the current source and second thing to do is find r equivalent c equivalent or l equivalent okay so let's do a couple of examples quickly for example now we have this circuit which has an inductor another inductor and a resistor so this is v naught this is resistor this is l1 l2 vi so you have an input you have an output and you have a couple of inductors and a resistor so what we are interested in is finding a time constant t <laughs> right but we are interested in finding a time constant t which is a lower r in this case now there are two resistors so what we are interested in this finding is l equivalent over r right so how we can solve this right the first step is short circuit the voltage source what we are left with is two inductors in parallel and a resistor v naught so looking at this circuit now we can easily see that our tau or is equals to l equivalent over r l equivalent is l1 in parallel with l2 over r which means that l1 and two inductors are in parallel so it is l1 l2 over l1 plus l2 into r so this is how you can easily find out the time constant tau for this network let's do another uh, quick example and then that will be it for today all right in example number two again for this we have to again simplify the network we have a resistor and a capacitor in parallel then we have another resistor another capacitor in parallel and we are taking an output over here so this is r1 r2 c1 c2 vi okay again we need to find out the tau so in order to find the tau let's simplify the circuit uh, again, we're going to short circuit the voltage source. If we short circuit the voltage source, we realize that both the resistor and the capacitor comes in parallel to each other. V naught. Right? So this was C1, C2, R2, R1. And this is R1. All right, this can further be simplified by two resistances appearing in parallel and two capacitors appearing in parallel, R1, R2, C1, C2. Now considering this, if I have to find the tau, I can say it's R equivalent and C equivalent both the resistances are coming in parallel r1 in parallel with r2 and c1 in parallel with c2 r1 in parallel with r2 is r1 r2 over r1 plus r2 c1 in parallel with c2 is c1 plus c2 so this is how you can find out the time constant um after reducing a circuit to a single time constant network so the concept is that we have to find out the equivalent resistance or equivalent capacitance or inductance of the bigger network to reduce it to a single time constant uh, network. All right, so this is our end of the chapter number one. In the next chapter, we're gonna start with uh, operational amplifiers. We will, we're gonna move to chapter number two um, starting next week all right thank you so much everyone um, have a great rest of the day i will talk to you later all right thank you bye, -bye.